Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Uh, depending on which part of the world you're tuning in into this webinar series. Firstly, um, I wish to thank the IWCN uh, for inviting me to contribute to this exciting webinar series. My name is Moise Mugera, I'm a Ugandan biologist and conservationist who has been working on the African golden cat or caracal or rata for 13 years, a species that has been described by many as one of the least known or scientifically well studied species on the African continent. At Windy, in Penetrable National Park, where I work, we call the species Rondata, which is a Ruchiga name, uh, Ruchiga being a local language that is widely spoken by local communities living around the national park. But anyways, today, I wish to share with you um, some of the exciting work, you novel know, community-based conservation work we do um, to eliminate the threat of unauthorized hunting of the African golden cats in Uganda. So, um, the African golden cat is actually endangered. It's an, it's an endangered species that is vulnerable by the International Union of Nature, or IUCN, measuring about 60 centimeters in, in body length and weighs about 11 to 15 kilograms. It eats anything from mice to monkeys. Um, the embarker can thrive in forests with moderate human disturbance, um, such as you know habitat loss and things like that. But we know it is seriously, seriously threatened by illegal hunting, as I'll share with you later in this presentation. So my conservation work on the Embaka commenced in the year 2010, when I conducted my first camera trap um, survey of ground dwelling mammals present at Windy. The Embaka was the last thing we expected uh, when we set up these camera traps. I would just want to get an overview of the animals present in the forest, but then there was this picture of a rare wild cat. Not so many people knew about it, not even the very experienced food assistants who had been working in the National Park for years. We later learned that this first black and white image was the African golden cat, the first picture evidence of a species existence in Wendy. In this one picture later proved to be one of those key barrier events that we often only recognize retrospectively Inspired by it, I led the first smart conservation status and ecological assessment of the species in the region, through which we learned even more that the species actually exists in three different color morphs, the melanin status, uh, the golden brown morph, which seems to be the most common one, and the gray morph, which is a little bit um, rare, at least in Windy, and very cool, very cool species to work on. But also in the same assessment, we we'll also learn that ants we we'll also learned about the unspeakable toll of unauthorized bushmeat hunting on uh, on the cats. There are 50% fewer cats in areas where hunting was prevalent compared to areas where there was hunting. And this was true also for habitat series where areas where hunting was prevalent, the species tried to avoid these kind of places. This was quite a reality check. Um, in that even inside well-protected areas like Windy in Penetrable National Park, where illegal hunting is strictly prohibited and punished by the law, hunting poses significant threats to wildlife, in this case, the African golden cat. And um, through our work, we also learned that hunters don't actually target the African golden cat. They target bush pigs. They hunt antelopes like the black throated daika here, but the snares they set, all the snares they use in their hunting, they're indiscriminate and in station with catching species that are known targets in what have come to fall over the years. Um, collateral damage of snare hunting on the African golden cat. And to give put to put this in context, just last um in 2019 alone, uh, we estimated that almost 81 African golden cats were killed in snare traps. Seven to one of these were unintentionally killed as collateral damage. So all this work over the years has provided provided the foundation for the first ever registered community-based conservation organization solely focused on, on the conservation of the African golden cat anywhere in the species range with a key vision to address the problem of bushmeat hunting. As its founder and director, I named the community based organization in Baka after the African golden cat's name in Richiga, a local language that I've said already, spoken in the Windy region. 
the CBO is led by nine person committees who are elected by um, uh, by the local communities themselves. And the idea is for them, the communities to be able to oversee the activities of the CBO um, from the village to the district level, um, being the, um, the, the, the top most administrative level in Uganda. The CBO also has a of understanding um, with the three districts that are just at the national park. So the work done is really, really localized and led by the local communities themselves. So um, currently the number is still growing, but Mbaka is actively engaging over 1,700 local families living adjacent to the national park uh, in consultation activities uh, that involve a holistic combination of community-based hunting, policing, uh, anti-hunting watch, watch groups, and also involving livelihood improvement to help the local communities to build that community conservation guardianship. The Embaka model has been uh, has proved successful judging by the ever-growing number of uh, local membership. So again, the idea of the, um, of the CBO is to reduce illegal hunting uh, by addressing the two key basic human needs, the need for meat and the need for money uh, via community-based livelihood improving programs designed and implemented by the communities themselves. So the first program we call um, is the Portraits to Protectors program uh, with the aim to inspire community dialogue and leadership against bushmeat hunting, consumption and trade. And for this program, we have established 79 local leadership committees, again, which are elected by the democratic process. And we have also established 59 community-based anti-hunting work groups. The second program is the Piglets for Bushmeat, whose aim is to provide alternatives to meat and money. Again, if you remember, the key drivers of, uh, of hunting. Uh, we have helped local families uh, to start small pig farms. And these are not ordinary pig farms because we impl implement them as pig state farms, whereby we give a female reproductive pig to a hunting family on condition they stop hunting immediately and um, they help their nearest neighbors to start also a small um, um, pig farm. This way you see that the conservation benefits actually cascade all um, across the communities. The third one is the Smile for Conservation or the S4C, where we use mobile dental clinics to provide our free or health care treatment and education to local people as an incentive for local support uh, of conservation efforts against bush meat hunting. Today, we have delivered this service to close to 500 local people uh, in the past two years. Then the fourth one is their conservation PESA, or the CPESA, as we call it, which are basically savings and trade cooperatives or circle groups. Um, these are non-for-profit groups uh, with one sole purpose to diversify family income through, low, uh, through savings and credit, and in a way, uh, discouraging unauthorized hunting. Um, using snares and winding. So far, we have established 10 groups with 619 members. But all this won't be possible um, or won't be complete without uh, constant monitoring and evaluation. So as part of uh, the programs, we also collect uh, data for the purposes of monitoring uh, these programs. And in our recent analysis involving 300 and two former hunters, um, we evaluated if these initiatives we've put in place are actually helping to discourage um, hunting. And yes, 100% of these families confess that the projects have established, um, they've been successful um, at reducing uh, hunting and that none of all the participating families has actually been implicated in hunting either by the, by the formal our law enforcement anti-patrol program or our own community-based um, anti-hunting program. And also over 80% of the local community members actually believe that these project activities can sweat um, unauthorized hunting. And this that success, um, they have attracted also a continental attention leading to the extension of our conservation model and initiatives across the species, um, the species range. Uh, currently in 20 of the 21 countries from Guinea in the far west Africa 
Peru, Ghana, Cameroon, the Congo, Uganda, Tanzania, further south to Angola, involving already 35 partners working at 27 protected areas across Africa. This um, network is called the African Golden Cat, um, African Golden Cat Conservation Alliance or the ADCCA, and is currently in the process of uh, registering as a continental NGO in Ghana. So with that, I'll take a pause and uh, happy to take any questions, suggestions, and thoughts. Thank you so much for listening.